Hello there, I'm Artsy Gamer 7 and welcome back to Small Speed Building on the channel. And this is going to be maybe the third or so video of being like new to YouTube. This is the first one of the speed builds that I got to record with my my new name for this new channel and the new start that I have, but we are continuing back on with continuing this mansion build. Now when I started this build and if you were to tell me, if you were to go back to pass me and be like, hey, you're starting this build, you're still going to be working on it uh, next year. I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> um, one, this build ended up being a lot more massive and a lot more time consuming than I thought it was going to be. But then also in between my different job situations that I had going on last year and also when I started this, I had no idea that the, pre the next year coming up I was going to be living in a different town, a different county, in a new house, um, engaged, planning a wedding. Not, did not know that any of that stuff was going to be going on. So yeah, <laughs> it was quite a bit that happened and that's partially why this build is taking so so long. Oh well, there's some things that I like about it taking so long, partially on the end of the Kratosim. So if you're not aware, I'm building this alongside a particular Kratosim to eventually have like a little mini series that's sort of structured like a reality show sort of setting where I will be putting all of those sims into this household with the use of MCC allowing for multiple people to be in a household at one time. I just will not be able to enter cast mode so otherwise it will delete everyone but eight people so we won't be doing that. With that I will be putting a lot of people in this house and seeing what chaos ensues, what happens, what, how they interact with each other, how they interact with the house, what they do with their free time. And there's also going to be a few twists put in there with um, a D&D &D the theme because all of the characters I'm creating in the creative sim for the sims going into this build are all based off of D, D characters that I have created. So there is going to be a little thing for every sim day where I roll a dice and I see if, what access they get to certain rooms. So some rooms if they roll a like three they're not going to get access to many rooms at all. If they roll like an 18 they're going to have access to most rooms. So so on and so forth and shit. So that is, that is what this build is about, but with it taking this while, there's been a few changes and things that I could do to the build itself, but also to create a sim. Um, there's one particular character, I think her video probably is up by now or going up around the same time that this video is, that I am redoing the voiceover for because... I am going to be changing her into a werewolf now that werewolf exists because in the original V uh, voiceover that I created a while ago, I was like, you know, if the werewolves existed in The Sims, I would probably make her one and then bam, um, now werewolves do exist in The Sims. So yeah, so she, she will probably be a werewolf by the time she gets moved into this household. But until then, you'll see her as just a normal sim, but I'll, I'll show off, uh, I'll try to show off any changes I've made to some of the characters, because I've made a few here and there, not many, but yeah, here and there as time goes on. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we are, of course, decorating the rooms at this point. That is the final thing. I am going to add a few things to the outside of the house. Planning on using the tool mod for it, hopefully... Whenever I go to do it, it has like an updated version. I don't really use the tool mod, tool mod much. Avid builders use it and can do amazing things with it. I just, I love building and I love decorating, but I'm just not enough into it to have it in my game all the time. So currently it's not in my game because it's just one less mod that I have to worry about it loading every single time. With that being said, I do want to use it to add a few things to their backyard section, like some bigger items that I couldn't fit. Just what land space I had on the grid section of the lot. 
But yeah, so I am going to plan on adding some things back there. But right now, at this point, it's just the bedrooms, which is the part that I was sort of the most excited about because I got to go a little bit crazy and go deep into the more of the individual sims personalities so this one is ivar's room so ivar is at the moment of doing this record voiceover he was the last one uploaded he was also the last one uploaded to my old channel none of the people after him have been up on youtube at all but see he was the last one that was been seen on YouTube at least somewhat. It may have been on the old channel, now it's here on the new channel, so yeah. But yeah, this is his room. Very, very dark and gray and slightly gloomy, but that's sort of what Ivar is. So <laughs> he is definitely a, uh, not a very shows his emotion on the outside, but has it on the inside type person. Uh, before, like, one of his whole stories is this whole dramatic scene situation that he has with a, an ex-girlfriend who he was like head over heels for she was the one who ended it ended the relationship not him if it was up to him they definitely would still be together so you know he's still getting over that whole situation so he is um a non-emotional emotional person <laughs> but yeah so his room is very very gray, black and gray, and that's mostly it. But this room that we're about to get on here, the one you should be starting to see here, this is the opposite of what Ivar's <laughs> room is. This is um a very much in your face, happy, light color, bam, and like all a lot of personality, a lot of happiness just exuding from this room. And this room is going to be Oriana's. So, um, Oriana is my lovely prey mantis person, a mantid, which is a homebrew race that I came across of. I've always really liked prey mantises for some reason. I, I couldn't explain it to you, but for something about them just fascinates me and I always found them pretty cool. I know out of a lot of the bugs, there's some of the more aggressive bugs out there, uh, <laughs> but something about them i'm like they're cool i love them anytime i see a prey mantis i immediately take a picture of it i have like who knows how many pictures of prey mantises i have come across in the wild um my most unique one which i can't even figure out what type of prey mantis it is because it's like i don't know if it was like a mutation um, something that wasn't supposed to happen to this prey mantis, because we only have, like, the, the greenish ones that sometimes also are brown around in the areas that I have lived. But this one was, like, a gray, black, and white, almost speckled, striped, looking, like, thing, marble thing going on its back. Really cool. It was a female prey mantis, definitely, but she never got very big. <laughs> she was really cool looking, and she was, I think she was a late hatcher or something because like I said she was very tiny she never got very big but you could tell she definitely was an adult at that point and it was getting very close to winter like it wasn't too far from winter or cold part of fall when I seen started seeing her more often and I remember going out she was near where my car was parked and I was always afraid that she was just gonna end up in the wrong place when I was trying to come home and especially when I'm trying to come home at night so I you know really can't see anything at that point much less a little prey mantis so i was always concerned but i would always check to see if i could find her and usually i seen her almost every day there was a few days i didn't see her but there, at, at a certain point when it was starting to get colder she had been in the same spot for several days and i was like oh no she's probably not doing well and i went over to see if i could catch her and she started moving a little bit so she was alive she wasn't moving a whole lot. I did catch her and I took her up to the one greenhouse that my dad still had heat going on in. And he keeps it heated overnight. And put her in there and she did move around. I think we, um, I've seen her again a few different times going up in there. And we eventually found like a prey mantis egg sac. We don't know if it was hers or not, but it was around the vicinity that I plopped her down in. So who knows, maybe it was was hers <laughs> but i never seen any prey mantises that looked like her again she's really cool looking um 
maybe at some point, I, you know, I could post a picture of her on Twitter or something if anyone's interested in seeing what she looked like. Because like I said, I tried looking to figure out what type of praying mantis she was and I couldn't really find one that looked exactly like her. But it was definitely interesting. Anyway, back to the room. We're getting sidetracked. I do that a lot. But yeah, so Oriana is my manted creation. She is more inspired by orchid mantis, which orchid mantises are so, so pretty. I am not much of a pink person. I've grown to like pink as I've gotten older. I used to hate pink, but now I actually appreciate pink, but I'm still not like huge pink fan. I'm going to lean more towards darker colors. I have a lot of black clothes, for instance. I do really like red, which obviously pink comes from red. It's a very lightened version of red. But yeah, um, other than that, I tend to, I don't necessarily gravitate towards pink too, too often. I really like till and I like red a lot. I like purples. Uh, <laughs> I'm staying in that red spectrum, oddly enough, but not liking pink as much. But yeah, this is a very pink room because again, orchid mantis, um, they're white and pink. Um, and they have a few variations of pink, but they are really interesting looking and really pretty. They look almost like a flower, hence why they're called orchid mantis. So they are some of the more like stand outy, I'm here type prey mantises. They're still blending in. Cause like I said, they look like a flower. So if you probably to a predator or something that was just moving real quickly or wasn't really paying attention. It would just look like a flower on a stick. So, you know, you wouldn't think much about it, but um, humans being the curiosity that we are, we come across these things, but they're really cool looking. I really think they're quite interesting, but yeah, so she's based off of Orca Man. It's hence why this room's screaming pink a whole lot. With her, that did want to incorporate a lot of pink. I also like, Oriana also has sort of this more Japanese type vibe to her, so I did try to incorporate things that were more like that in with her. Um, partially, I'm not actually entirely sure where Orchid Mantises are native from, but in terms of the Manted homebrew race that I came across of, a lot of whoever created that um, homebrew had a lot of Japanese inspir inspiration behind a lot of their design and like what clothing they did, like the clothing they wore and things like that and just their overall appearance. So I decided to take that into inspiration when creating my uh, Orkin Mantis, but not like completely. There was like, I like taking inspiration from things and then putting a little twist on it and stuff like that. So, but yeah, she has a little bit of that inspiration mixed with her. So I tried to do that in her room as well. So I have a few items there that have more of like a Japanese feel to them than other items, but I had a lot of fun decorating her room, even though this is definitely not a room that I would want to sleep in. This is not, not my cup of tea other than, you know, the Pusheen and the Mantis. Yeah. And you know, it might be weird that she has a Mantis in like a little glass thing, but in my head, you know, technically she herself may be a Mantis-like creature, but you know, she would see one and be like, oh, let me take care of you, I love you. Like, she's not trying to keep it cactus. She's trying to take care of it and she relates to it. So, and also just in terms of Sims trying to equate that manted connection that she has, because obviously I can't make actual bug Sims. <laughs> so other than like some CC that I have come across, I can't do that. Um, so she doesn't have too strong of mantis vibes. Uh, Tarja and Pyra have more vibes of their insects that they're based off of like because a butterfly and a spider i have cc that screams a little bit more spider and butterfly than i do prey mantis so give her a little prey mantis in her room why not I had to take a little bit of a water break I was just, i'm talking too much actually it's just i i haven't recorded in so long whether it's a vlog or an Let's play. <laughs> My voice is getting reused to this again. <laughs> um, I was struggling a bit last night. I recorded some LP uh, Let's Plays. And uh, tonight I'm doing some voiceovers because I realized I really needed some voiceovers of some things. So, like I needed to catch up on those a little bit 
faster than my LPs. But anyway, yeah. So, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> but yeah, back to Oriana's room here. <laughs> right now I have a lot on her desk. I think I move the desk and declutter it around a little bit. But I'm just trying to figure out where I'm trying to put things as I go. Um, because I'm pretty sure I eventually declutter that desk and put some of it over. Yeah, there I go. Look at me go. <laughs> Because otherwise you couldn't actually use that desk, right? And some people will get their desk to that point. I've, I've been to that point, mainly with my art room desk. My art room desk are really bad to getting cluttered and getting to the point where, like, I can't actually work and do anything on them. So, yeah. But I am also realizing that I never mentioned... Let me know what you think, thought about Ivor's room down in the comments below. And do the same for Ayana's. There's one more character's bedroom in this video as well. And we should be getting to them fairly soon as we're finishing up Oriana's here. Also, let me know what you think about the mic situation. I have moved it a little bit closer to my face and I'm going to try that on a few voiceovers. Just let me know what you think about it. I did have a comment of someone suggesting trying to do like an ASMR thing and I was like, well, I'll give it a try. And I don't think I'm quite doing the ASMR thing because I'm pretty sure the ASMR thing, you're like right on the mic. I'm not quite there, but I'm pretty close. But as of right now, I just want to see where this placement and this movement of the mic for my voiceovers do. So I would like to hear your feedback on that. So anyway, add that before I forget about it because <laughs> me will forget about it if I don't say it while I'm thinking about it. But yeah, so that was the ending of Oriana's room. The very, very pink room. And now we're going to go back to a dark room. <laughs> I didn't intend it to happen this way. Uh, if you've watched the previous videos, I talk about how I actually, again, bringing the D&D twist into the play. I actually gave everyone an individual dice, which I will be bringing back for when I do the mini series. Though some of the dice might change because I have, I might have bought a few new dice since then. Just maybe. But, <laughs> so everyone's gonna have their own individual dice set because I like buying custom dice. I like them, I like them being pretty, well, not custom dice, but you know, not just your plain dice that are just a solid color. Um, I do have some solid color ones, but yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> but I, I like having all the different pretty shiny things. The clinky clanky dice that are pretty and different and pretty. Uh, yeah, so yeah, everyone had a different dice. Let me get back to that. <laughs> and I rolled them all and basically if anyone got a nat 20, I took those and re-rolled them again and narrowed it down to who got first. Nita automatically got first dibs because she was my ever first D&D character that I ever made. And... You know, it's just sort of that, like, oh, thing with her that I was like, she's important. So let me actually just go ahead and move her in first. But then everyone else had to roll dice. And eventually I narrowed it, got it down to who got decorated first, who got first dibs. Because again, I'm going to be treating this almost like it's a reality thing. So, you know, they like took a chance in Sims world here and see who got first dibs on what rooms. I have some characters who probably really didn't care if they got first dibs or not. Oddly enough, the character who I got to decorate their room either second or third was definitely one of those characters that he would not have cared whether or not he had a big or small room, but he got an early on dib, so, you know. <laughs> I don't think he, he didn't go with the biggest room. He also didn't go with a room that had a bathroom because some of these rooms do have bathrooms on attached to them. So, you know, that's a nice plus, but not all of them have, but, uh, he, he's an, an undead. So <laughs> he was like, no, nah, I'll leave that for someone else. So like, I don't need that. So yeah, with this order, it's oddly enough with this and even just editing down this video, I have a room that's more of a dark room and then a room that's more of a bright, in your face, happy room. And then we're back to another dark room and it's quite interesting. So this is going to be Aurelia's room. So Aurelia is my Kalishtar. I'm probably not, I, I think I've missed say that one all the time, but basically she has a ghost friend, uh, short terms, uh, as simple as can be. I did not make a creative sim making her like friend who is her 
the ghost that uh, like follows her around and such. But I ended up actually deciding to make a sim to represent the friend because her whole story was that, you know, she had a really best, like a close best friend when she was little and a tragedy struck. But uh, eventually she did get to reconnect her with her friend. It was just the spirit of her friend. So now they stay together and thanks to her friend who just had a nat natural innate ability, she's able to have more of abil like different abilities than she could on her own thanks to now having her friend with her. But I did make in Sims World a friend of hers. So, and I... <laughs> Sometimes what I have to do for some of these things sometimes is like questionable and sort of sad, but I had to purposely create the sim, immediately murder the sim so that they could be a ghost, so that I can take use her in the background of the screenshots for Aurelia. Um, if you watched Aurelia's create a sim video, you would have seen them. And now I have her urn so that Aurelia can bring the urn to this house and set it somewhere in her room so that her ghost friend could every once in a while haunt the house. So, yay, that's fun. So that is something to sort of look forward to once Aurelia and everyone else has moved into this house. There will be a ghost technically rummaging around, um, probably every once in a while breaking things. Hopefully someone has the urge to fix said things as they break because I'm going to have little to no control over these sims because I am get treating it like a reality type situation. So reality show. So I'm only going to control them for certain situations. Like if they roll a low number on their dice, like a one, and they're trapped to only staying in their rooms, then I might have to get, they might have walked out of their rooms faster than I can get them to stay in their room. So I might have to do something like that. There is a cat in the house. So I am going to hundred percent make sure that they're feeding that cat. So I will control someone every once in a while to make sure the food bowl is fed for the cat. So little things like that, but otherwise I'm not going to have too much control over them. So let's hope someone fix the things that Aurelia's friends are going to break because she will break things. Granted, she probably will go for Aurelia's bathroom first, maybe. Most likely, more than likely, because that's close to where she will be coming out of, because she will pop out of her urn, and her urn's gonna be in Aurelia's room, so hopefully Aurelia fix her own bathroom. But, uh, because uh, technically everyone else is going to be, for the most part, locked out of her bath, her room at some points, because like if they roll like a, if she rolls like a one, the door's just gonna be locked. No one's allowed to come in. She's not gonna allow to come out. So in those situations, Hope she fixes them so you know i'm not gonna lock their bedrooms the whole entire time though because also there might be some juiciness that could happen you never know drama might happen there's a lot of sims in this this one area with you know lots of different personalities and attractions and things so eh. but as you might have heard me just mention aurelia actually does have a bathroom so this is one of the smaller bedrooms but it does have a bathroom attached on to it so because it was one of the smaller rooms, it hadn't necessarily been gobbled up or snatched up yet by previous people, but it was getting to the point that it probably would have been, but Aurelia was able to come in here before someone else snatched up the room with this last bathroom here. It's also like, I think this bathroom is not quite as big as some of the, well, no, it's probably about the same. It's just a different shape, actually, now that I think about it, but, um. There's a lot of things that go into through my brain when I'm selecting these rooms for these characters. Is there a character that they'd really like to be close to that's already selected a room? So, you know, they're trying to get to room on the, like, right beside them or at least on the same floor as them or something. Uh, so that may be why they passed up on a room with a bathroom. Are they someone who technically probably won't need the bathroom as much like someone who is an undead person? So, situations like that, you know, eh, don't need a bathroom or you know don't care too much for a bathroom or you know this room's a little bit bigger and there's a bathroom almost like right there i don't have to walk too much yeah i have to walk out of my room but i don't have to walk very far so i'll sacrifice the bathroom being attached to my room so that i can have a bigger room situations like that but you know really i got lucky she got a bathroom so i'm sure she's happy <laughs> i know that i myself i am an awkward duckling and I don't do well in very huge social situations. Oddly enough, I work retail, but so far it's been for the most part tolerable. 
so I've I've been okay. But <laughs> if something about work, I can switch that off. I can be like, oh, okay, I'm at work. Turn my normal brain, for the most part, off. Or, I wouldn't really say normal brain, but you know, my normal brain. <laughs> I can sort of phase out the fact that I have these weird social awkward cues, but then you stick me in a situation that is no longer work, and there's a lot of people there, I'm immediately going to act weird. I'm immediately going to feel a little bit uncomfy and such. And I'm very strange about sometimes with bathrooms. Like, I'm not a germaphobe, but something about bathrooms in particular, I really don't like using public bathrooms. <laughs> but, so, you know, me personally, I would be trying everything and anything to get a room with a bathroom. I don't care how many stairs I have to go up or down. Like wherever my bedroom is, but as long as the bathroom's attached to it so I don't have to really share it with anyone else, thank you and please. <laughs> so yeah, we're finishing up Aurelia's bathroom here and her bedroom is pretty much finished. I think I add like one or two more things at the end here, but Aurelia's is going to be the ending of this video. Let me know what you thought of Aurelia's room and her bathroom and then the other too. As far as this video is concerned, who's you, who's got the favorite room? And then far as the whole mansion is concerned, who's your favorite room? I don't know which one I would pick. I really, really like Nita's. That's slightly going more towards my style. I also really like, oh man, there's just so many actually. But I loved Forsythia's room, but I don't think I personally could stay in there. But I loved how it turned out. But that's not one I could stay in. I really like Aurelia's room. It's probably is one of my favorites, but it's more my style. Um, so probably why. But yeah, anyway, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please hit that lovely like button, subscribe. You know all that lovely YouTube goodiness. And I hope to see you in the next one. But until then, bye bye.